Hello. This is the sixth video in my series on American behaviorism. This one, the first of two, dealing with the work of B.F. Skinner. Burhus Frederick Skinner rose to fame after World War II and became perhaps the best known and most influential psychologist of the second part of the 20th century. Living to the age of 86, he only died in 1990 and remained almost to the last a prolific researcher, author, inventor and television personality. Although his theoretical ideas on behaviorism came to be minimized, particularly after a devastating attack on his work published by Noam Chomsky in 1959, many of his other ideas continue to be accepted and are still in wide use today in psychological research, education and psychotherapy. Skinner was an extreme behaviorist, holding firstly that subjective entities, including the mind, thought, memory and reasoning, were only traps of language that had no real existence, so all talk of personality, states of mind, purposes and choice was meaningless. Secondly, that behaviorism was objectively right and in no need of justification. And thirdly, that theories of learning were entirely unnecessary. Everything that we do is simply determined by our history of rewards and punishments. He also espoused an extreme determinism. Autonomy was an illusion. Good people behaved the way they did because they had been conditioned to behave that way. A good society was one based on behavioral engineering through methods of positive reinforcement. He expressed his vision of an ideal, scientifically controlled society based on behavioral engineering in his 1948 utopian novel, Walden II, the title, a reference to the 19th century writer Henry David Thoreau's Walden from 1854. In Skinner's Utopia, children are conditioned since birth by positive reinforcement to be cooperative and sociable. All behavior is controlled for the good and happiness of all. Although the dialogue has been described as wooden by his critics, it has remained a cult classic, with students having sold well over two million copies. Like Watson, Skinner was a naturally controversial figure, although in his case because of his intellect rather than his behavior. A superb publicist who delighted in being a provocateur, he shot to instant notoriety during his first television appearance when he posed Montaigne's famous dilemma, if you had to choose, would you burn your children or your books? Skinner opined that it would be better for him to burn his children, as his intellectual contribution to the future through his books would probably be greater than his genetic one. This provoked outrage, and, unsurprisingly, many more invitations to appear on television. Skinner's impact on psychology was massive, but also quite mixed. On the one hand, unlike most psychologists, he was a well-known public figure, who spoke directly to the general public through the media, often being cast as the scientist hero and the iconoclast who was liberated from ancient restrictions. As such, his views on behavior and human nature became widely known outside the fraternity of professional psychologists. His academic impact was more complex. For a long time, Skinner was simply ignored by much of the academic establishment. He slowly acquired a number of devotees, however, eventually leading to the publication of four journals devoted to Skinnerian research and theory and to the creation of a special section of Skinnerian type studies within the American Psychological Association. In terms of theoretical psychology, even outside of the circle of those who wholeheartedly embraced his ideas, there was recognition that his concept of conditioning was a major advance on the ideas of Thorndike, Pavlov and Watson, and accordingly a section on Skinnerian operant conditioning is now an invariable part of general psychology textbooks. At the same time, however, the whole concept of conditioning was being effectively downgraded as cognitive psychology gained importance. In this context, it was possible to accept that Skinner's system of conditioning was valid, and also Pavlov's, without accepting either his rejection of subjective entities, that is, radical behaviorism, or his extreme determinism. 
It was also possible to accept the practical applications of his theory and incorporate them into the newly developing psychological consensus. Before looking at these applications, however, it is necessary to examine his theory of conditioning. At the center of Skinner's reconceptualization of behaviorism was his concept of operant conditioning. This contrasted with the classical conditioning model of Pavlov, in which the new stimulus, such as the conditioning sound of the metronome, was crucial in behavioral change. Instead, Skinner developed Thorndike's emphasis on the importance of the consequences of action, specifically any action which an animal made operated on its environment, and its future behavior was shaped by the consequences which ensued from these actions. The consequences could take four basic forms. A positive reinforcement was any consequence that increased the likelihood of a particular behavior being repeated. This included receiving rewards, such as when an animal was given a food reward for completing a particular task, or a child was given praise for what it had done. A negative reinforcement was an aversive consequence, which was removed or lessened if a particular behavior was repeated, such as an annoyingly loud telephone ring that will cease if the phone is answered. A positive punishment was when an aversive stimuli resulted from a behavior which increased the likelihood of the behavior not being repeated or being repeated less often, such as receiving an electric shock. A negative punishment was the removal of a valued stimulus in response to a particular behavior, encouraging the subject not to behave like that again so as to avoid further loss. With this repertoire of consequences, Skinner realized that the behavior of animals, including humans, could be shaped by the administration of the appropriate reinforcements and punishments, often by rewards for a series of little random movements towards the goal behavior uh, until an animal acted in a particular way. Examples of the behavior shaped by such means have included getting a pigeon to peck at a small colored plastic disc, getting a pigeon to peck out a tune on a toy piano, training two pigeons to roll a ball back and forth with their beaks, teaching a rabbit to pick up a coin in its mouth and drop it into a piggy bank, and teaching a pig to turn on a television set, pick up dirty clothes, and put them into a hamper and run a vacuum cleaner over the floor. For Skinner, operant conditioning was how children learned how to talk, to sing, to dance, and play games, and eventually acquire the entire repertoire of human behavior. He proposed what Hunt has described as an erector set model of human behavior, with humans as mindless robots assembled by operant conditioning from a multitude of meaningless bits. I should note, however, that we can accept the process of Skinner's system of conditioning without subscribing to this extreme view. Skinner's experimental work also enabled him to develop the concept of partial reinforcement, that is, the examination of how behavior can vary under various reinforcement regimes, in which, for example, the rat's behavior was continuously or only intermittently reinforced. One particular finding that elicited much interest was that intermittent partial reinforcement, when the rats only received partial reinforcement on an irregular basis, was likely to elicit continued bar pushing long after rewards had ceased. That is, the extinction of the behavior was difficult to accomplish. There was an obvious parallel here with the actions of human gamblers who played slot machines and the like and who, seemingly contrary to rational expectations, hung on in the hope of eventual success. The same might explain the desperate hopes of jilted lovers, whose object of adoration showed them occasional kindness, thus continuing their sense of possible reunion. I will talk about some of the practical applications of Skinner's ideas in the next video. Thank you.